Um, first off, we should. Um, can we? Does anybody have any um, issues or concerns with the minutes? Hi, uh, this is Cheryl Peter. Um, I sent an email. I just noticed a couple of typos. Um, I believe I sent the email to maybe Keith or Greg and Shannon. Cheryl, if you could just send me those uh, typos uh, and I'll make the corrections. OK. All right, this is Peter Mason. Um, uh, not hearing any issues with the minutes. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the minutes? So moved, it's Wynne Everts. Second, Shannon Jacobino. If everybody could, this is Peter Mason, if everybody could raise their hands in favor. Great. Those, are there any, are there any opposed? Seeing none, uh, minutes are approved. Um, I want to remind everybody that these are, this, this is a public meeting um, as such. Uh, we're recording these minutes, or we're recording this session. And uh, every time you speak, please uh, let people know who you are and who you're associated with. Um, I know it's difficult and I still don't get it right, but I will keep trying myself. Um, and uh, we have uh, individuals in the public can watch, um, but uh, they are not. Uh, there's no mechanism for them to uh, have a conversation uh, or speak to the meeting. There are no uh, public. Um, uh, there's no opportunity for the public to speak. Uh, we do have on our website under the OPERA initiative, there is an email address. Uh, so if anybody in the public wants to ask a question, they can submit that through the email address and uh, we will uh, respond uh, accordingly. Um, moving on, um, going to the advisory committee email update and the opera email address. Keith. Okay, just to let people know. Um, Introduce I, yourself, I, Keith. Keith Lavalette, DDS. <laughs> Um, just to let everybody know, the uh, I sent out an email that everyone received, but it's been a while um, to get onto the uh, DDS uh, ARPA website. If you don't have it any longer, if you can just email me, I could resubmit it to you. And uh, also, if you have difficulty getting onto the uh, website, uh, I could try to work you through it. Sometimes with an older computer or whatnot, it might be a little bit more difficult. So we could try to work it, work it through together. And that's all I got on that, Peter. Okay. Peter Mason, thank you. Um, I think Peter. that both. Well, yes, hold on. Nope. <laughs> So uh, Barry Simon O'Kill, um, uh, I know that, so I did get onto the site and I did uh, get onto Teams and I thought that we were gonna post um, on the Teams uh, file, you know, the various either handouts and or uh, PowerPoints or reports um, that we've been referencing. And I don't know if it's me, I didn't, I couldn't find them or see them anywhere. So I'm not sure whether we did or didn't do that, but I, I just wanted to ask if anyone else has seen them or had access to them or Keith, if you know they're there and I just can't uh, find them. Uh, Keith Lavalette, DDS. Uh, Barry, they're not there yet. Um, okay. This website is something new for us, so we weren't even sure if everybody was going to be able to get on and I'm still not sure. Uh, so I wanted to make sure 
everybody's get on this site and I don't know if that's happened yet. So um, if if we need this to put Peter things Mason. up there later. Like these, these should be on our ARPA website uh, on on the DDS website, right? Don't we have all those? Uh, oh, the there? PowerPoints and things are they're all on the website. Yes. All right, so we as a committee, like some of the, I think, um, Peter, like you were reading, I don't know, some from, I, and I can't even recall, there was some report you were reading and you had said that that, that report was going to be up on the, I, I thought you had said on the Teams site in our folder um, because it was going to be an internal document to us as a committee. It was not going to be a public consumption document. So I just want to make sure we're talking about the same place that things are going to be posted. Yeah, if there's an internal document, that would be through the email piece that we are all sharing. If it's okay, if it's not the internal piece, it, we're we're putting it on the website. All right. So I think um, the thing that I was recalling that I was trying to look for was you had mentioned the various things that Deloitte was going to be. Um, focusing on as a consultant and you read through that. Is that something that would be posted on our team site or is that something that's going to be posted on the DDS website for public consumption? That was, I was reading through their um, the proposal they have. We have the scope of work uh, that would itemize all that stuff and I would just have to work that through leadership to see if we can share that. I'm not, I don't understand. I don't know why we wouldn't, but I just have to clear that through. At that point, that would have all the stuff you're talking about. Okay. And would something like that be on the Teams site or the um, DDS website? Uh, probably put it on the Teams site. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, just as a, um, a, a, a for information, uh, the day the day committee has uh, approved the interim day incentives. Uh, so now we have the interim day and the interim res incentives. Um, the residential committee has requested that I uh, develop a more comprehensive document that would uh, itemize all this. Uh, we're in the process of working through that. Um, I'm working through with leadership at this point uh, at that. And um, once that's done, then I will uh, share it with uh, the advisory committee and the res committee um, and for their approval for not for their approval, but for their feedback. Um, and um, hopefully we can start moving forward on that. Um, the next piece, and we started this last, and I want to keep this going because I want to wait. I'm going to put Deloitte. Uh, we want to Deloitte towards the end because I know there'll be discussions regarding that. Um, but this regarding um, discussion from committee members on items identified by families or individuals that may interfere with moving to an alternative day or residential setting. And I want to keep that on here, and I'm hoping that uh, as we move forward, uh, things will be identified that we can start to address. So um, I'm not too sure if anybody has anything they uh, would like to highlight now. Um, and if you, uh, if anybody's not comfortable sharing it here, they can always send it to myself or Keith um and we can bring it back to the committee so um i don't know if anybody has anything that um uh, any item that they feel would interfere with moving to an alternative day or res setting at this point shannon you got your hand up shannon Shannon Giacovino, DDS Ombuds person. I apologize if this was discussed last time, but in a conversation that I had with another um, committee member, you know, one of the things that we were discussing is 
what is the incentive for families um, who may be uh, have their loved one in a CLA? And for all of the reasons that we discussed last time in terms of the mindset that we have, which is you need to keep all the funding in case you need it <laughs> um, in the future. Um, you know, I don't know what the incentive would be for uh, a family in that situation to want to um, to have their loved one move. And then I'll, I'll just make one other comment in that uh, in the individual and family engagement committee, we've been having um, providers and, and people from DDS come in and do an overview of all of the different service models. And the one sort of common thread is that you know, it really takes a lot of hands-on work and collaboration with individuals and families every step of the way, anytime any change is made, and that trust is an important factor in that. And so I think just in terms of communicating with providers who are developing their plans, it's really important for them to understand that families have to be um, involved from day one um, in every step of the, it, it, it's a collaboration. It's not something you're presenting to somebody and saying, do you want it or not? Uh, this is Peter Mason. No, that's a great point. I, I, I mean, all this has to be team driven um, and person centered. Um, I think, you know, with the provider that they're going to be um, identifying certain areas or certain um, settings that they want to address. Um, and uh, that's probably, that's what starts the ball rolling. And then at that point, then uh, when they have that identified those areas, that's when they're then the process of working through the team as to how, what that transition would look for the various people. Uh, in some cases, it may be transferring to an alternative uh, resident, on, on, to an alternative residential setting, another one may be transferring to another CLA, uh, but it's going to be up to you know how that works that through that process with the provider and the family. As what well, I, all I can say in terms of as we're moving to this um, through this system, um, the the idea that uh, everybody. Uh, keeps what they have, um, and I know that's something that's been around for ages. Uh, you don't want to give up what you don't have, um, and um, that's a frustrating piece on my, for me, in that um, it, it should be you get what you need, uh, not what you have, and so if your support needs now are in a um, in a CLA, but you can live in a less uh, supported environment and for more independence and more choice, then you have you you should be able to get the money you need to support you in that setting. And should it should at any time that individual uh, require additional resources, then that the regions should be uh, working through that to get that. Um, I think, you know, having people hold on to something just for the fact that they don't want to lose the money um, is it's it's an age old thing, um, and 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 it's something that we need to uh, we need to figure out how to break that uh, barrier. Uh, how do we um, and, and what's that going to take to do that? And and I know. Uh, I can say all these glowing things now and tomorrow we could be in recession and all of a sudden you're going to hear horror stories um, and um, or we'll never or we don't get into recession and things work along for fine for a while and then something happens, uh, you know, but the that we have to make sure that the, the premise is you get the supports that you need um, and not holding money back just because I may need this in the future someday. Uh, because that then affects not just them, but other people in the system, because then there's less money to be had um, to support other people. So how we how we come up with what needs to be done, what needs to be said, I think I think we need to that's something we should be addressing 
um, because I think it is a critical component. Um, but it, it, you know, it, trying to break that has not been easy. Um, Barry, you had your hand up. Yep, uh, Barry Simon O'Kill. So Peter, I, I mean, I liked what you said, and you know, should that be? Um, in part, what is guiding us in transforming this system? In that, if the you know the vision for the system is that people uh, come in and they get the message that once you're in the door, um, you will be cared for, um, or your loved one will be cared for, or your you know who you are a guardian for will be cared for in a way that they are getting the right service at the right time um, and they will be ensured that they're able to transition up or down the continuum whatever is appropriate and they don't have to worry about keeping an attached amount of money they need to worry about making sure that they're able to choose between quality providers getting whatever kind of service is appropriate for them and that the system is managing you know the the care options such that that those options are available and that we are identifying as part of that transformation um, you know what how do we create more options more opportunity uh, for services that allow people to be moving around in the system and our end goal being that more people are getting more services and if you can eliminate a few spots at the very high end you can create a lot more spots uh, in the middle or lower ends and so the net is that you're having more people getting services but how do we transform the message that gets out there i think can be part of what we're doing as a committee yeah, this is Peter Mason. I'm I, I'm in full agreement. Um, I, the only thing I would probably say is that, um, you know, the right support versus the need support is where you start getting into uh, the conversation, um, and where uh, an individual may do fine uh, in their own apartment, but they may need additional support hours versus you know, going right into a group home and who considers what the right piece is has to be the team. And um, and I think so it's I think wording becomes critical in terms of what we're talking about. Yeah, I, I um, Barry Simon, uh, OK, I would agree. And how we um, try to replicate as much as possible what it it is naturally for even any of us that are going into a system of care and how we um, are able to get what we need uh, for care and you know I was you know I, I always throw out as a you know an example of just because I have indigestion doesn't mean I get to have open heart surgery because I want it um, you know and I'm not going to find a doctor who's going to say you need open heart surgery because you got indigestion so how we manage a system that is a, you know, providing what people need or, you know, or what the right uh, amount of care is at that time. But the sense of I'm in, I'm going to get the care that I need or I, you know, or, you know, is appropriate, but I'm going to, once I'm in, I can move around the system um, wherever, wherever is appropriate. Right. Um. I, let's see, this is Peter Mason. Uh, let's go to, I'll try to go right down the line. Uh, Kevin Bronson. Yeah, Kevin Bronson, DDS. Uh, kind of going off of what everyone's uh, already talking about, you know, one of the things that I was listening in this conversation, you know, we're talking about a team and, and working together to, to do a lot of this sort of stuff, but one of the team People that you know you don't really hear well I haven't heard mentioned here much is uh, you know case managers and DDS staff in particular and a lot of those uh, 
people kind of impact, uh, you know, this process, you know, just by having knowledge of the system, right? And I, we just had our meeting, uh, you know, I'm the co-chair, and this is me not as communications director, this is me as the co-chair hat. Um, we just just finished up our, our uh, meeting earlier this morning and, you know, kind of talking about how, uh, you know, I think family members were mentioning how it's not that they, it's not that they want their case manager to, uh, to know everything. They just want to know that their case manager has access to all the options and can look through and find it out, right? Because it's, you, you don't need to know it all. You just kind of need to, 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 to know how you can access that information. So I think, you know, that, that piece is something important to, to think about. And, and I, I, another, I know this is probably not the time to mention it, Peter, but I'm going to, I don't see a piece in the agenda to talk about it is, I think it would be a great opportunity here to have uh, some subcommittee, or I guess they're not subcommittee, just regular committee updates on what the other four committees are doing reporting here. Um, so it might help, you know, make our decisions here better. Yeah, thanks, so. this is Peter Mason. That, uh, I th we have talked about that, and I think what we were looking at this meeting um, to introduce Deloitte um, and um, have that conversation. Um, but I will ask Keith at the next one, can we put down that we'll start putting updates from all the various committees? Keith Lavalette, DDS, yes. Good, Thank you. Um, Peter Mason, uh, Michael Bailoff. Michael Bailoff, parent and agency board member. So um, I, I think in working with families to get buy-in for this, I think language is going to be important. And Peter, you know, when you say um, less supported environment, it makes the hackles of my back go up. I think that we should use, uh, we should consider using the uh, less restrictive environment. Number one, that's language being used in the school district. And everyone in the school districts wants a less restrictive environment. I think that's what we should, you know, certainly being in your own apartment is less restrictive than being in a CLA. And I think using the parent language that parents are used to hearing in something that's a positive, whereas less supportive seems, well, what do you mean my kid's getting less supports? I think can be, can be challenging for families. I think from a messaging standpoint, we wanna think about there's different messages I think that will be effective for existing individuals in the system who are trying to move out and families who are accessing residential for the first time who want to get in regardless of it. I, I don't know very many families whose goal for their child is a group home, is a group residence. They want some kind of residential uh, program for their child, but their dream is not a group home. For families who are in group residences, they're scared that if they move, they'll lose something like we've talked about. I think if there are guarantees or uh, whatever language that the that that DDS is comfortable with, that if it doesn't work, there won't be a delay in them going back to a more restrictive environment. That would be something that would be very helpful uh, for families. Um, uh, no, you know, again, I know guarantee is hard is a, is a hard way to put it. Um, maybe there's a different way um, that that the organization would feel comfortable with. Uh, but something where families would have that comfort level that if the less restrictive environment doesn't work for their child, that they can have a different option, uh, including going back to the more restrictive environments. I think I think finally, you know, we, you know, at this level, we've been talking about the, you know, the movement of folks in different options. I, I still want to, you know, I think it's important for families to understand what are the options and have it, you know, when, when I look at the information that's currently provided for families as to what the residential options are, it's about a paragraph each on the, on the DDS website. If those could be expanded both in a written format and also in in presentations to the public, 
I think that will be helpful to for families to look at what their options are and, and how they work and how their children are being protected and served in these least, less restricted environments. So they will be comfortable moving those moving their children kind of down the line to a more appropriate and uh, a more appropriate environment for their for their family members. This is Peter Mason. Thank you, Michael. That that those are great insights. Um, uh, one of the reasons why we're getting uh, we're trying to hire a communication consultant is so I don't have to communicate it. Um, <laughs> um, I think uh, the guarantee or whatever we call it, I think that's something we should explore. Um, and you know whether that gets. Um, limited to those that are part of the transition plan we can take a look at um how we word that for everybody in the system we need that that probably will be a little bit more um complex but i think that's something that we can explore um and i know the uh individual and family engagement have been uh reviewing the different uh supports um and with the goal of them going out and uh, determining the best way to communicate that to families and individuals. So um, I don't want to speak for Shannon, so I will ask her later uh, for that. Um, but uh, so we'll, we'll get back to that. Um, I do want to go. We've got three questions, and so I want to do go through those three and then move on to Deloitte, and then we can come back to this after Deloitte. Um, so um, the next one is uh, Kate Hayland. Kate, are you out there? Yeah. Hi, it's Kate Holland, uh, parent. So I, I agree with a lot of what people said um, about the language. I also feel like there has to be, um, we talked about the communication, but a level of transparency along the way um, for families. And I think it also should be kind of determined or at least defined for families um, who and what determines someone needs. I know right now we use the lawn. Um, if that's going to sort of continue, I think that has to be something that's talked about with families. Um, because I do think um, a lot of times parents are saying this isn't working, this isn't working. And um, agencies and DDS and staff, they do get that kind of information and, and sometimes it is kind of mirrored back to the parents well let's just wait on it or we think it's working okay um and when there are disagreements there doesn't seem to be any sort of way to or procedure to kind of resolve that so if there are disagreement um the family is sort of left with well now i'm on my own here i'm kind of kicked out of here or I, this isn't working for me and i just have to go into this abyss of some kind of service and hope that somebody's going to help me um, I do think historically um, the transparency part has been hard. Um, I, I know for myself even and a lot of families, even the whole idea of Pratt is very confusing. Um, there isn't a lot of transparency with, with Pratt. I feel like um, so those kind of historical things I, I do think impacts families trust. Um, and I think it's important, especially for um, those individuals who need family members um, and a team to be able to advocate for them because they might not be able to speak. Um, they might not be able to adv advocate for themselves. I feel like having those kind of guidelines or talking about that with families, what's the procedure if we decide that something's going awry here? Um, because I think families are worried that if something does, if there is a blip, OK, but then how are we going to kind of work through this? And then how do you move? like within the continuum um because i can tell you even now i get told a lot that for my son that um we can't um find staff a lot of times for in-home support um individualized home support and um i do continually get told um if you don't use it you're gonna lose it um so i think there is that that's still feeding into things for families and families are still getting kind of told that and even for me that makes me on guard like oh my god I better find someone <laughs> even if it's not something good i better find something because i'm in a tough situation now and i don't know what i'm going to do if i lose the opportunity to even interview people because the funding is gone so just that collaboration and kind of procedures i think would be important for families thank you uh, let, let me follow up a couple of things um in terms of the level of need one of the initiatives that we're doing through our the ARPA initiative 
is reviewing the universal lawn that is out there. Uh, re and we're doing that, reviewing that compared to our lawn to see if that's a, 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 an avenue we need, we should be going down to. And I know that that's part of our, I know that they're in the process of doing all those reviews. Um, the second thing I wanna address, there is a process. If, if there is a program issue you have, um, and you know that the case manager's not listening or the region's not listening. It's called a programmatic, programmatic administrative review. We call it a PAR, uh, and that can be submitted first to the regional director uh, for their review. And if you don't like that, there's another uh, one that goes to central office that can be submitted to the commissioner for his review. So there are things that can be done uh, if you don't feel that the program is meeting the needs of your individual. Um, and then the, in terms of the transparency, I think that's, a, a you know, the, the, the Pratt piece and how do we communicate that um, may be something that we need to take a look at and how do we, um, how do we address that and how do we um, uh, unveil the, take the curtain away and let's see what, you know, what happens behind it. Um, and, um, you know, maybe that's something that uh, Shannon's group can also take a look at. Um, and with that, I will then say Shannon. All right, I'll just, I'll be quick. So I agree with everything that's been said, but Michael, I think, raised the point, which is that the people that, in terms of just the ARPA funding and the goals for ARPA, the numbers of people that you want to move, um, the people that but we right, have not, to... Not we not I want to move. It's the department wants to. I thought I said we, but I I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't saying you, Peter. Um, and, and by the way, this is Shannon Jacobino, DDS Ombuds person. Um, the people that we need to motivate are the people who have the supports already. Um, I agree with what Michael said. I think most families I meet in the community, as long as they are aware of what the options are, people are open to a lot of different things. It's the families who have the supports already who are reluctant to make the changes for the obvious reasons. And I, I think that that ties back to something that Barry's been saying, and hopefully it ties into our conversation with Deloitte, which is I think there needs to be some context for what's happening here, right? There needs to be um, a vision that is communicated to people in our community about, about why the system is changing. It's not changing just because we have this money. It's changing because we need to have these kinds of changes in order to create that continuum and in order to be able to serve more people and to serve people appropriately and have more person-centered supports. And I think that that context is important and it has to be repeated and communicated and over and over and over and over again. Because if it's just because we got money from the federal government and that we have this, this goal to move a certain number of people from congregate settings into the community, then that's not going to be that's not going to be motivating to most people. Well put, well put. Um, so with that, that's a good that's a good starting point. Um, what I would like to do, uh, this is Peter Mason, um, and I would like to uh, ask uh, Keith if you have the list of all our members. Um, that the members can introduce themselves so that Deloitte has an idea of who's on this committee and where they're from and what their um, uh, where they're what they're affiliated with. Um, and then once we go through that, then I'll ask Deloitte to introduce their team. Okay. Um, why don't we start with uh, Tracy? Good afternoon, I'm Tracy Walker, the CEO of Journey Found, a provider organization in North Central Connecticut and also co-chair of this committee. Uh, next we have Kate. Hi, I'm Kate Holland, parent. Uh, Stephen, are you on? Okay. Uh, Michael. 
I'm sorry, it's Stephen. My mute was on. I didn't notice it. It's Stephen Siegelaub. I'm a parent as well. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Michael? Michael Belloff. I'm a parent. I am also also serve on the board of Ableist, a DDS agency. Uh, Wynn? Hi, I'm Wynn Everts. I'm the executive director of the ARC Connecticut, and I'm also a parent. Uh, Barry. So hi, I'm Barry Simon. I'm the president and CEO of Oak Hill. Uh, we are a specialty healthcare and special education uh, provider of a continuum of care that does uh, IDD, mental health, substance abuse, assistive technologies, uh, and the rest. We're a statewide agency. Melissa? Hey there, Melissa Kremel. I am the Executive Director of Connecticut Family Support Network. Uh, Kathleen? Hello, Kathleen Stauffer, CEO of the ARC Eastern Connecticut. Katie? Is Katie on? Okay, Cheryl. Good afternoon, this is Cheryl Ellis. I'm the uh, Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion with the Department of Developmental Services. Shannon. Hi, I'm Shannon Giacovino. I'm the DDS Ombuds person and I'm also a family member. Brian. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brian Smith. I'm an assistant regional director for the Department of Developmental Services, and my primary focus is the Individual and Family Support Division. Kevin? Kevin Bronson, DDS, uh, Communications, Legislation, and Regulations Director. And Paige? Paige, you may be muted. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Did we lose Paige? We might have lost Paige. And did I leave anybody else out? Uh, this is Greg McMahon. I, I've met the reps, representatives from Deloitte, but uh, I am one of the ARPA uh, coordinators. And we have met before. I'm Keith Lavalette, um, the project manager of the ARPA. Peter? Yeah, this is Peter Mason um, uh, overseeing the ARPA project. Um, I'm delighted to introduce Deloitte. Um, they come to us with a vast knowledge of experience and um, they put together an excellent proposal and we're, uh, I've asked them to come here and to present uh, to uh, give you guys an idea of where, uh, what they'll be looking at doing. Um, so I'm not who, not too sure who's going to take it from here. Uh, Amanda or Betsy, I'm not too which one. Uh, but if you can introduce your team first and then go through it from there. Thank you, Peter. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amanda Harris with Deloitte, uh, and I'm a project executive uh, for this transformation system project with DDS. Um, my, me and my team, we're so excited to be here. I think you'll find many of us are passionate about long-term services and supports and have been working with many government agencies to support those programs. Um, and so thank you for what you do every day. And we're really uh, humbled and honored to be part of your team um, going forward to help you make some of these big um, transformational changes. 
Um, I'm going to go to uh, my team for a quick introduction. So we'll do Betsy, Tom, Kristen, Julia, and Owen. Right. Hi, I'm Betsy Bella. I'll be the project manager helping to lead this Connecticut DPS transformational planning work on the Deloitte side. Good afternoon, Tom Steiner on the Deloitte side, and I'll be working on the financial components, rate development. Kristen? Hi, my name is Kristen Murphy, and my role is a subject matter advisor um, for the team. Um, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is What's Owen next? I might have jumped again. I'll go quick and then I'll pass it to Owen. Um, but my name is Julia Oak. I'm so happy to be here and I'll be supporting the team um, throughout the project. I'll pass it over to Owen. Hey everybody, my name is Owen Shome and like Julia, really excited to be here and we'll also be supporting the team on the Deloitte side. And Amanda Harris with Deloitte again. Um, we also have a couple subcontractors who will be joining us throughout this project um, because this is their first week. They're not on board yet, but you may see uh, we're thrilled to have advancing states as part of our team, as well as health tech. So you may see them going forward. Um, so, Peter, would you want us to just go ahead and jump in? OK, excellent. Yes. Perfect. So um, like I kind of mentioned, um, we are uh, in our first week. So what we thought we could do for this group is give you just a high level overview of um, the work, the scope of work that we'll be planning on doing, some tentative timelines. And of course, we recognize that um, DDS and all the ARPA work groups um, have been hard at work. Um, and this project isn't starting today. So we're, you know, we really want to make sure that we understand a lot of the good work that you've already done and then uh, just kind of help you progress that forward. So in our, I'll start with our project phases. There's four big phases of our work, um, assess, design, plan, and implement. And what we'll do is we'll take um, each of those four, um, as well as some project management support and initial wave of providers. I, I can explain what that is. Um, and just kind of go a little bit deeper to share some of our thoughts on on our approach. Um, and then, of course, love to hear any of your thoughts as we try to get started um, this week. So we'll definitely um, talk through some of our project management. And then, um, as I mentioned, that initial wave of providers, we understand you've got some folks who are ready to go. And we want to capitalize on that kind of interest and momentum. So we're going to be working pretty quickly to better understand how can we, you know, support an initial wave of providers. Um, let's go to the next slide. Now, this is very tiny. You won't be able to see it uh, very good here. But just to give you a, an idea of what our project timeline are, um, we're kind of tracking going through April of 2024. But a bulk of the heavy lifting, I think, goes through April of 2023. So we'll have these different phases, the assess phase where we're looking at Connecticut, but also other states. Um, we'll talk through how we do that initial wave of providers. We've got a design phase where we're really looking at some transformation options, but also options related to the uh, rate methodology and those incentives. And then how do we work with providers in terms of uh, the planning um, with their restructuring plans? And most of that is happening, like I said, through April. And then after that, it's a lot more of what we're anticipating to be technical assistance, like kind of being a resource for providers, working with them as questions come up. Go to the next slide, and I kind of just want to jump into each of those sections really quickly. Betsy, as the day-to-day -day project manager, will you hit the highlights of, of our project management? Sure, of course. So as you all know, DDS is really the lead behind these transformation efforts with Deloitte's support and input, of course, from other stakeholders like yourselves. 
So these reports and updates really help to keep DBS informed so that they are on top of all the efforts as we guide the day-to-day -day work. And then a work plan, timeline, and careful management are gonna help us always to stay on target because we know the importance of these deadlines, right? Even beyond the usual reports of deadlines, the money has to get out the door. We have to make sure these funds can be applied. And so that's gonna be the focus of our project management is making sure that folks are informed and that we stay on target. Thanks, Bet Amanda Harris with Deloitte. Thanks, Betsy. Um, so in our next phase, and this is kind of going to be where we're really launching um, this week and uh, sort of our immediate next steps is in our assess phase. And this is where we're going to look at, you know, the current system in Connecticut, um, your policies, your reimbursement methodology, uh, you know, the services that you're delivering. And we also want to, to look at what other states are doing, and I think that would be something we'd be interested to hear from you. Uh, in my experience, a lot of times states look to certain states uh, as, uh, you know, maybe having some good practices. If you have suggestions, we're happy to take those and dig in. Um, and so we'll be looking at both you know, transformational system changes, what are some leading practices in this area, but we'll also look at um, the rate uh, reimbursement methodologies as well in different states. So please let us know if you have um, thoughts on states you want us to dig into. Another key component of this phase, which I think is really important, is to get stakeholder input. Um, and so we are planning for four virtual input sessions. We'll have to spend a little time designing what that looks like, uh, but engaging stakeholder groups of course, including providers, the DDS self-advocates, the case managers and, and, and state staff, um, as well as individuals and families. Um, so we'll plan to get a lot of feedback there to come up with more of what we're calling like a current state review. Go to the next slide. And for our design phase, of course, you know, Taking our learnings from the assess phase, all of our research, uh, bouncing some of some of those findings off of you, that's when we'll try to move to um, what are the transformational options, um, and then you know how are we going to look at um, the rate and that transition plan. So I'm going to actually ask one of my team, uh, Tom, would you talk a little bit more about uh, the rate methodology, as I know that's very important to this group. Sure, thanks, Amanda. Tom Steiner with Deloitte. And I'll, I'll stay brief and then high level, but uh, really the rate development will follow uh, goals of the project, if you will. So it's understanding, um, as we're talking about today, you know, what are those goals? What are those priori priorities? Understanding those on the front end. And then, as Amanda has mentioned, uh, looking at other states, looking at what we've done uh, currently, but also, you know, if there's a, a state or two out there that has something that you'd like us to review to make sure we're considering it, um, looking at the different possibilities and then tailoring uh, a rate setting design to really match those priorities and that complies with uh, the federal government, CMS, uh, to make sure that we're in alignment with their requirements as well. Um, that, that would be the starting point. We'll go through a series of different data collection to help to get to numbers, um, but you know, understand what those, those numbers look like. But again, we're just designing, we're not right now setting rates, but um, always good to have a rough idea of what some numbers look like as we consider different designs. Amanda, I'll pause there unless there's more that I should touch on. I, I see Peter, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, I just want to, this is Peter Mason, um, project director, manager, whatever. Um, I, I do want to say that there, uh, a lot of the stuff that Tom's going to be looking at, we need to work out through DSS. Uh, I know DSS is going to be doing a rate study, so we don't want to make sure that we're not stepping on any toes. So um, I just want to mute that, you know, un until that gets resolved, um, you know, 
this is the thing we're proposing, but we you know may change based on our conversation with DSS. Thank you, Peter. Michael, did you have your hand up as well? Uh, I, I don't know if it's the right time to ask. I was just wondering which states are being chosen to um, uh, uh, to look at as a comparison to other options. Yeah, I'd love to share that with you. As Amanda said, we are just getting started. Um, we work with a number of states, so those always come to mind, but uh, it's very important for us to understand the, the goals here in Connecticut and what that looks like. More to follow, Michael. Amanda, Amanda back over, back they, over here. Amanda Harris, Deloitte, I see one more hand. Um, and is that Barry? Yeah, so thank you. Um, I, again, I'm not sure where you are in your presentation. So do you want questions like to, <laughs> to date uh, in the presentation or do you want them all at the end? Uh, Amanda Harris, Deloitte, um, I, I think go ahead and ask your question. We've got a couple more slides to round out our um, approach. Um, so I would say go ahead. Okay. Um, so um, both as a provider, as a parent, as a whatever. Um, so a couple of things. One is that um, you guys are obviously the experts. So where you have seen um, successful transformation, uh, would be wonderful. I can tell you that um, participating nationally, um, I can't say that there's any states where I've heard uh, of providers or participants or people saying, yes, we've got the, the best system, you know, going. So, you know, for us to kind of approach this with, you know, we would like to design the best system going that has uh, the rates that allow for the system to be sustainable and that uh, also you know participating nationally if our goal is to create uh, best practices that have appropriate rates that allow us to pay um, you know reasonable salaries and attract a workforce for professional uh, development if those are all our goals then i think we'll get there but if we're you know just really approaching this with, you know, what are the five least worst states uh, out there? And let's take from those and design the least rates that are going to allow us to, you know, prop up the state budget. Um, that's going to be highly problematic for the future of the system. So I'm a big fan of let's lay out the goals that we all are approaching this with uh, as a way to create a, a sustainable system that allows for the you know most choice uh, for people uh, to be in the continuum, and you know I don't know uh, how we approach that, and if we learn from the mistakes of the five other states that are out there, so that we don't repeat them, um, great. But I just you know I want to get that out on the table that having participated in a number of these kinds of efforts over the years, I, I feel like we go down rabbit holes of creating the least worst as opposed to, you know, the best, most effective. Thank you, Barry. Amanda Harris with Deloitte. Um, point taken. Appreciate that feedback. Um, we really approach um, best practices research as inspiration. Um, we do want to align with your goals and it's not necessarily taking in in whole um or even in part you know what other states are doing but you know where there are nuggets that could help your thinking progress or um, could align with your goals like that's what we really try to look for so i would say it's a bit of a an art uh, when it kind of comes to this but i think the research kind of helps us baseline or benchmark like what are other people doing can we bring new ideas um, to you to consider but it's all about how can we align um, you know Connecticut to what your goals actually are all right let Thank me you. touch really quickly you're welcome um, on the plan phase 
Um, so we've got two more phases. We've got the plan phase and then implementation um, plan. This is where we're really working with the providers on those organizational restructuring plans. Um, we'll work hard to develop some templates and guidance materials um, and um, develop some stakeholder communications during this part of the work. And then on the implementation, this is where we're, you know, continuing to work with providers, but also providing that ongoing um, technical support um, to providers as they are implementing their plans. The last slide, and sorry, I'm going quick just because I, I um, think we're probably getting close to time. The last phase was um, this recognition that, as I mentioned before, there's a set of providers who are ready to go now and um, wanting to support that, we're gonna be thinking through as we're start kicking off that assess phase, trying to do some, some research and, and uh, get some of that information in there. We're gonna try to um, also in parallel, look at how can we get a template together? Um, how can we work with um, you know, DDS to, to start supporting some of those providers who want to start making changes now. So those are, I would say, assess phase and this initial wave of providers is on our immediate next steps and on our minds to, to start thinking through a more detailed work plan uh, of how we're gonna go forward. So Peter, those, I, I know I hit that really, really quickly, but I uh, just kind of wanted to get through all the phases of the project. Um, I'll turn it over to you to see if you had other comments or perspective you wanted to share with the group. Thanks, Amanda. Um, so, uh, as I said, we're looking forward to uh, Deloitte and their expertise. Um, you know, when we start looking at goals and all that stuff, we have to make sure that we keep in mind um, the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services, that needs to be up there as well. Um, we know that uh, coming shortly is their new guidelines that they have, the final settings rule they call in terms of uh, what uh, for uh, uh, group home and day programs. Um, and so we need to make sure we keep that in the back of our heads as well. Uh, we have uh, our day program. We had a uh, uh, supported employment leadership network review of our day program, and they're looking at um, different uh, alternatives for our resident for our day program as well. So we've got a lot of things that are happening. It all seems to be gelling at the same time, and trying to put up, put that all together um, um, is what our goal is, so that uh, we make sure we are hitting all the different pieces um, so that when we finish this, we've had everything in line uh, with uh, what's happening out in uh, the rest of the country, uh, where we need to be in terms of with CMS and what we want to see for individuals uh, in our state. So with that said, is there any other questions out there for our Deloitte team? Barry? Yep, Barry, Simon, O'Kill. Um, Amanda, will you also be looking at, um, I guess, two things. Um, being a, a multi-department provider, um, there are best practices in other departments within the state that, um, because they're already billing for those kinds of services, um, you might be able to replicate as uh, promising or best practices as you're building a continuum of care options. Um, and then the second question I had is, is the entire system, you know, I, I kept hearing you say provider, provider, provider. Um, does provider mean uh, DDS also, or is this just about um, the nonprofit side of the system? And I think Kevin uh, at one point said that, you know, case managers have a huge impact on the system. I I absolutely agree they have an impact on the system. Uh, some of us would say pretty negative impact on the system, but they have an impact on the system. So are we going to look at the whole system and its effectiveness and its efficiency and where change might help the system be more uh, productive 
for everybody. Amanda Harris with Deloitte. Um, Barry, yes, to your first question, on, I, we'd love it if you share which agency that you'd like us to look at. Part of our assessment and research is getting sort of like a landscape scan of Connecticut. Um, so if that's another agency, we would definitely want to look at best practices within your own state since we know that there was an appetite for that. So that's helpful. Um, in terms of looking broadly, definitely case managers are part of our plan in terms of the stakeholder engagement and who will be um, engaging with throughout the project. So broader than providers, yes. Okay. This is Peter Mason. Do we have any other questions? I see a hand up, but I oh oh Cheryl. Hi, uh, Amanda and your team. Thank you all for providing that information. Um, I'm Cheryl Ellis. I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion with the department. Um, I know Deloitte has quite a robust um, diversity initiative and uh, component. I've kind of Googled some information for myself and I'm just wondering how you're going to or what are your plans to incorporate diverse providers and um, make sure that diversity is not secondary to some of the the things that you need to consider in a transformation amanda harris deloitte um thanks cheryl for bringing that up um you're right dei is very important as you know we think about providers and the workforce um it is top of mind i think our strategy would be working with Peter and team, um, since we're kind of new to this, we don't, I don't have a lot of context about the network of providers, but I think that's something that we have to keep in mind throughout the project um, and always making sure that um, DEI is an issue that, 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 that we're being very conscious of, especially as we're engaging the providers, but also the other stakeholders as well. Um, so we'll work with uh, Peter and team uh, to keep that top of mind. And, and briefly, Amanda, that's something we can bring from other state work as well. So more to follow on that, Cheryl, but understand the importance of it. Peter Mason, um, DDS, is there any other questions out there? So, uh, one of the things that uh, we'll go back and talk with Deloitte is how do we keep this committee informed? Um, so um, we'll figure out some kind of reporting strategy um, so that uh, you can uh, keep tabs of what's happening um, with uh, with Deloitte. If there's no other questions, um, then I would ask the Deloitte team to sign off and uh, everybody else stay on and we can finish up our business here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is Peter Mason. So um, now that they're gone, are there any other questions that you may want may not have wanted to say in front of them? <laughs> <laughs> No. All right. Oh, um, no, 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 Peter. Oh, sorry. sorry, I didn't see you, Barry. Um, so it's not that I didn't want to say it in front of them. I just, um, I, I think you just made the statement of, you know, how do we keep this committee uh, apprised so they, they can keep tabs on the work that they're doing? Is the work that they're doing, uh, like, it feels like the work that they're doing is the work of this committee, um, is how I feel about it, but I'm not sure if that's how you guys are setting it up. So if we're just keeping tabs on what they're doing, then it is clear that they're working for you 
as the department and we'll be informed as it plays out versus we as a committee are engaged with them and having an impact on the work that they are doing. And they're in essence working for us as a committee, you know, de facto the department, but uh, it, it, I, I just wanna be clear as to whether I should expect that this committee is engaged and influencing the work they're doing, or is this committee just keeping tabs and being updated on the work? I may have used the wrong term. You, I, the, this committee will be engaged in um, helping to frame where they're going. Um, okay. so, um, and I mean, there'll be things that I'll be working on the side with them to make sure we get things moving forward. Um, but, you know, um, and I'll have a conversation with Deloitte how they want to work through that. Um, okay. You know, uh, we've got, and I keep saying it, timing is everything here. So it's like, you know, I, I got to make sure that you guys provide the input that's needed. At the same time, I need to keep the train running. So um, I can't let the uh, train sit for too long and then have this keep getting spread out. So it's a it's a delicate balance. Any other comments or concerns? I see one. Uh, when? Hi, um, Wynne Everts, um, parent. Um, I'm sort of wondering um, in terms of process, are they gonna do a bunch of work and then um, run it through us and then we will be coming up with some kind of a vision statement because I really, I mean, I really think I'm worried about the time going by. Um, I'm worried about um, positioning the incentives uh, to work and, and things like that. And I just, um, I don't wanna hurry it, but I wanna make sure that we're you know, using the right levers at the right time. And I understand that they have a process to do, um, but, you know, I think we had conversation earlier in this meeting that sort of indicated that there, there are some gaps in knowledge and comfort with going through this that I think really need to be addressed. And I'm trying to figure out how we can get started on that and whether we necessarily need Deloitte's input to start. Just food for thought. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think you need to wait for Deloitte to start doing that. I think we could do that on this end, um, and um, have them and inform them that this is what we're looking at for them to do. Um, so I, I know that, as we had said, there's two phases and phase one is going to be for those that are voluntary and wants to start now. Um, you know, those incentives have been uh, approved, move forward, uh, but those are the interim ones. And so as we get to the second phase, then we'll start looking at that piece. Um, but in the meantime, um, you know, we sat down last week with them just to come up to make sure we had the scope of service. Uh, so we've got that set up. Um, now it's going to be, OK, what do you mean by each piece of these? How long is this going to take um, for each of these different pieces and stuff and, go, and start getting into the nitty gritty? Um, and as we start looking at that, then it's going to be, OK, um, this needs to be through the advisory committee. This, you know, you, you look at our department. I don't think that needs to, that this committee to say, OK, unless there's certain things, you got to look at this, 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 this. Uh, but I think if we want to come up with what those things are, I think we should start working on that uh, as we speak. I don't know if that answers your question. I'm not sure it does either, but I think 
what you're d doing is you're giving me a you know a dimension on the complexity of what you're trying to do um, <laughs> yeah. and so I, I mean i mean i understand that i just think there's going to be a time where you're going to need to show somebody what a supported living arrangement looks like how it's staffed what is done how the remote supports work blah 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 blah. and i just want to make sure that that starts to happen in a timely basis yeah um, i don't even think we're we're at that point yet i mean that's definitely where we need to go but we're not at that point yet thank you uh michael Michael Belloff, parent. Um, I, I, I think we, and rightly so, focused. We tend to focus more on the residential side because a, that's where the bigger dollars in terms of of shifting is going to be, and the higher concern from the parent side. But I don't think we. I think we also don't want to forget about the 200 folks we want to move down the line from DSO, and there's a secondary skill that we don't want to avoid thinking about, which is. If we're moving folks from a DSO to supported employment, to individualized employment, competitive employment, a big piece of that is the skill of finding jobs. There's two pieces. One is the skill for finding jobs for those individuals. And I'm not sure that we have inside of the agencies and DDS the skill of finding jobs for folks um, through the you know through the agencies. That's number one. And number two, you know, to make sure that as we're finding jobs, when those jobs are less than 30 hours a week, that again, as I met, said, the other, I'll, I'll keep saying it, that individuals are engaged in the hours that they're not working. So they're not sitting in their um, individualized departments by themselves um, uh, uh, with, with skills wasting. Okay. Um... Barry? Oh, Barry Simon O'Kill. Um, yeah, so Michael, I, I definitely agree with you, and I don't know whether we spend time, you know, as a committee debating, um, you know, these, or not debating, but trying to come up with what the vision statements are that help to guide, um, you know, both what we want to, what we want out of Deloitte, what we want to have as our North Star um, kind of thing. Even I know you were um, bringing up a really good point before um, around um, least restrictive versus, um, you know, and, you know, for me, I'm always thinking about, you know, what setting offers the greatest opportunity for independence. And I put this in the in the chat um, and how we phrase some of these questions and how we debate them and how we um, you know, have constructive conversation around creating these guiding lights for us as a committee that we're going to get out into the greater, you know, um, system such that they are buying into this transformation. Um, I, you know, and I, you know, I, I also put in the 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 chat there. Even if we're not thinking about, you know, what are the obstacles, but um, you know, what are, uh, you know, if we're looking for families or, you know, anybody, providers, it doesn't matter to me, but, you know, what in, is going to encourage movement uh, as an alternative uh, day or residential um, setting? What do we need to, what do we need to provide as opportunities? What do we need to provide as choices? What do we need to provide that's going to help that? And that's just to me really flipping that question, but um, you know, that in and of itself is a totally different discussion about coming up, you know, how many obstacles can we come up with as opposed to, you know, how many ways can we come up with encouraging uh, people. So I just think we as a committee have a lot of work to do to be helping to sell all of this uh, mm -hmm. as part of the, the system transformation. Yeah, this is Peter Mason. That's a great point, Barry. Um, and I, I think, you know, um, when we meet and meet in the next uh, October 18th, I think we need to look at, uh, you know, some of those things, you know, what are what are the goals that we're looking for? What are the 
pieces to this. Um, you know, I, I I think we have a day working committee, or we have a day working committee. So if there are issues that the advisory committee would like them to um, research or come off, I think we should tell them this is the things that we'd like you to see. Um, how much we want to do on this end versus the higher level stuff. I think that's what we need to work out uh, on our end. Um, and um, I mean, we've got a lot to do in terms of that and, you know, giving direction to Deloitte. Um, so uh, there's still a lot of work for us moving forward. Yeah, and, and just uh, Peter on that, I think um, you're, you guys are obviously having the most conversation with them for them to ask us what five states we want them to look at they should be coming to us and saying here are the 10 states that we're we are the national experts uh, on this here are 10 states uh, you know here are the pros and cons of those 10 and you tell us which five uh, you know you would like us to be you know playing around with uh, yeah, this is Peter Mesa. It, 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 that's a double-edged sword that, you know, uh, if they come back and say these are the 10 states and not ask for our input, then it's going to, they're going to be upset can. because I, they'll, so, no, no, we, yeah, I think you know, we can, yeah, we can I, question their choices, but, yeah, right. you know, as experts, they better be coming to the table, to, for me at least, they better be coming to the table with, you know, here's what's going on around the country. And I, and um, I think at the and you and I always agree, but this one we agreed on because when I talked to them before, I said to them, well, what did you, who are you expect, who are you? So I've already asked them that question. So I'm sure Good. they're still Good. looking it around. So, okay. Um, Peter Mason again, uh, Shannon. So um, I'm going to pop in the chat the uh, link to the minutes for the individual and family engagement um, committee. I think, you know, I know. People don't have a lot of time, but we have been having people come in and do presentations on different service options. And I think it would be great for Deloitte to look at those um, videos of those meetings to understand what's happening here in Connecticut. Um, I think it would be great for members of this committee. You know, you don't have to look at the whole meeting, but to just zone in on those um, presentations that are being done. I think it would uh, be incredibly helpful. Um, not just to have an idea of what the options are, but also uh, it's been incredibly inspirational to um, to to see these presentations. And it's exciting when you see um, uh, exciting and very moving when you see the freedom that people are being offered and the peace of mind that families are being offered. Um, and so, you know, I know people don't have a lot of time, but if if you can take the time to do that, I think it's worth it. Thank you, Shannon. Peter Mason. Um, Steve. Stephen Sigalow, parent. Um, in discussing systems changes, will there be changes within the DDS, for example, in the roles of staff people within the DDS? And for example, um, the case manager system that's been in effect as long as my daughter's been in the system over 15 years, would that change as a result of this? Well, that, that this is Peter Mason. That that's a that's an interesting point. We, I mean, it depends what the system comes back and looks at what what we would need. Um, you know, if they look at and uh, there is recommendations in terms of what that. I think this, you know, DDS would look at it. I know we are already looking at different things that we're trying to do. Uh, so, for example, we are uh, in the process of moving through the hiring process for uh, a. a an, a director that's going to be overseeing assistive technology. So there's somebody in the department that's just concentrating on that. Um, you know, in the plan is somebody who's just looking at residential as well. Um, so that, you know, we are looking at how do we structure administratively um, and then how does that work? To, how does that fall down into the ranks of the DDS staff, whether that's case manager, the supervisor, the regions, whatever, um, you know, this needs to be how do we, um, if this is going to be a systems change, it has to be the whole system. And, you know, when the question right. came about the, the DDS, uh, we're also looking, you know, we're also asking DDS to be part of this initiative as well. 
Um, and, uh, you know, what is it that we're trying to do? I know that um, we are, uh, we're just put in for um, $600,000 worth of assistive technology equipment to be used in public group homes so that individuals can start seeing what that does, how they can start utilizing um, technology in the group home so that when they do move out into uh, a private agency, hopefully they'll be using, you know, they'll be used to technology as they go out. So we're trying to get our, our system aligned. Um, you know, right from down from the uh, to the small part is we uh, have realigned our whole uh, personal needs allowance, which used to be very archaic and was based on an ICF model. And now it at back basically matches how it is in somebody's it, it is in a the room and it is in a CLA so that as people move out, there's no these the shock of going from a state system to the private sector. So we're out, we're looking at it as in, in all the different ways. So, you know, that's going to be a piece that we keep um, moving forward so that um, individuals uh, will hopefully be able to move through the system seamlessly through the whole system. Thank you. Um, Greg, you had your hand up for a while. You're on mute. You're muted. You know, I, I must have double clicked it. Um, this is Greg McMahon, DDS. Um, I would just wanted to piggyback a little bit on what Shannon says and said, and also the um, has something to do with the report out of the subcommittees or the committees. Um, but uh, what we would be reporting today in part would be that we are working on, and I've heard this from a number of committee members here, working on a, a better and multimodal uh, description of what services there are and what they what they mean and what are the good you know the best parts of getting into a certain thing and what are some of the challenges that families might face in one setting or another um, and we're looking to that to be a, a project in a sense of our committee and hopefully the communications consultants who will be better at putting together something than we will be um, but uh, I've heard again that many people are uh, many families do not have the information they need to make the decisions, and we're hearing that regularly. So we're hoping that we'll have a product, in a sense, uh, that comes out of that committee, um, and that we're working on that now. We're not waiting for Deloitte uh, to do that. Peter Mason, thanks, Greg. Uh, Barry? Yeah, um, Shannon, I, I don't know if if your committee, when you're getting the proposals or, or getting the presentations, are you looking at, um, you know, um, services that are done in other departments that might have uh, promise uh, for replication, ACT teams, supported departments, supervised departments, you know, all that stuff. Um, and then also, you know, how uh, in other departments that have already done this transformation 20 years ago, I know I keep bringing up, you know, Demas eliminated the case management layer because of how much problem it created in the system. And the system ran so much more effectively and efficiently that, and it, and it put so much more resource into the system that could be used for programming. Um, are you, get, you know, gathering and hearing about that kind of stuff? Uh, Shannon Giacovino, DDS Ombudsperson. So the answer to that is no, because our committee is charged with communicating with individuals and families. I think it would, I would love to um, to do that actually. Um, and I think it, you know, it's a great suggestion for the residential um, and possibly the day transformation committees to, to, uh, to, to maybe have somebody come in and do that presentation. I mean, I would like that, but I think we have to sort of deal with the options that are available in terms of communicating to individuals and families. But I do think that, you know, making that suggestion to the other committees. Oh, Greg's going to chime in, so I'm going to let him go. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, the, um, you've covered pretty much, this is Greg McMahon from DDS. You've covered uh, most of that, Shannon. It, we also, uh, in part because of the need to move forward with the incentives, we're focusing on those um, areas that are incentivized um, as part of the uh, transformation. So um, the education we're giving to, to our committee members and ultimately at least the first draft or round of, of program descriptions will cover pretty much everything, but uh, with a focus on what's being incentivized as well, because part of the charge of our committee is to work through making sure people are aware of how the incentives work. Um, okay, the the challenge I think with that is that if the, if the system could create more options and better rates down the road, that would really be an incentive for transforming the system as opposed to one time stuff. And I know we're, we're not here to talk about rates, but just thinking about the system as a whole, if resources could be put into more options with sustainability, that's a real incentive to move the system. Yeah, this is Peter Mason. I, I think um, the individual and family are trying to help move along this initial phase and if if in the second phase we're looking at the act team and all that stuff then that needs to get uh worked through the system so that it's something to be able to um educate people on that's happening at that point in time if it's not happening you know to throw something out may confuse people so um, we need to figure out, you know, where, what that would look like, how that fits into the system and, you know, whether we need uh, any changes through CMS for, it, for starting up that program. So, you know, there's two pieces to this. So, you know, whether you want, um, it, since I'm co-chair of the res committee, um, we could what would be helpful is if you want to come at one of the future meetings and present on what an ACT team is to that group so that we would have a better understanding of what we're what we're looking at, what you're, you know, what to, what what this support would do and how this would be uh, um, a, a, an important piece of the continuum. Sure. Yeah, happy to do that anytime. OK, great. Thank you. Uh, Peter Mason, and let's see, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin Bronson, DDS. Uh, I just noticed, uh, I think I might have found my answer, but I, I couldn't find, um, well, you know, it was just, there's no date. That I was looking for these draft incentives everyone keeps talking about, because uh, I don't know where they are. So, uh I do see that the residential one, they're posted under minutes on the website, but I don't know if that's what we're referring to or. That's, okay. that's it. Yeah, we haven't, that's what we, was, we, we need to, we're working on a more uh, formal explanation at this point. And uh, Keith, I okay. think. I, they should be well, I guess I, we could probably take, I, you know, what, we'll take our conversation offline because I have a couple more questions that don't necessarily involve everyone else. So, OK. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Peter Mason. Uh, Cheryl. Hi, thank you, Cheryl Ellis, uh, director of DEI with DDS. Um, I'm just wondering when you mention ACT, I come from the Demas world and I'm wondering if it's the same assertive act teams that we have there that you're talking about that model yes um barry do you still have your hand up or are you oh no no okay um well we're at three o'clock um so uh if anybody doesn't have any more questions we will be meeting again october 18th uh, we'll get the minutes out. Um, we'll set the agenda and uh, we ask uh, 
I ask that you make sure everybody looks at it. If we've forgotten anything that you want to address or start to talk, take a look at that agenda so we can change that. Um, and I'd like to start uh, bulleting the different pieces that we're looking at doing. Um, and so if I miss something, just let me know. Um, if there's nothing else, then um, I hope everybody has a great